What I'm going to do is, is kind of go through some exercises which I think are pretty helpful in terms of networking and give you some tools and some resources. So, uh, and I want it to be interactive so we can all share, we can all learn from one another. There was a famous uh, guy named Harvey McKay. I don't know if you know Harvey McKay. He wrote a book called Swim with the Sharks. He's written a bunch of books. I met him. He had, a, he had an envelope company in Roanoke, Virginia. And he came up with this McKay 66, which I always thought was kind of unique. A lot of people have followed up on it. But basically, if you're selling envelopes or, you know, you're going out to people every week or month. And his goal was to collect 66 pieces of information on everyone. So he would go around. So he'd go in and see his client, and you know, because that's more of a, uh, you know, a regular sale. So you get to know them, you know. So you'd find out how old the kids are. You'd find out where he's from. You'd find out what sports teams he'd like. You'd find out, you know, two or three new pieces of information every time, and you'd collect all that information so that if you were a Michigan Wolverines football fan, you know, you'd get the program from the Rose Bowl or from the national championship whenever when they win it, and you'd send it to them. So it cost you 10 or $15. Think of the impact of that or whatever sports team that was important or the Olympics or something like that. And so this is kind of a, a way to think through this. So F is for family. Okay. And I think that's helpful. I usually try and keep track of, uh, you know, kids' birth year because... <laughs> You know, some, something like that. That's important. Um, activities. What are, they, what are they like? What can you connect on? What's important to them? Do you ask people about that? What do you like to do? Do you? Do you ask that? Y yeah, I hope so. Okay. All right. I think that's a good place to start, more so than business. You know, what happens a lot of times is, you meet someone in some situation, what do you do? Or what's, what business are you in? And that's fine. I mean, that happens a lot. People are used to that. But I think if you start here with activities or family or one of these others, it's better than going right into business. You do want to know what people's business is and understand their business and maybe visit and do all that. But let's look at some of the ones that maybe maybe aren't as, as, as well known here or thought of as much. What's unique? <coughs> How's your business unique? That's a good question for people. Why is your business unique? Or why is it different? You're a graphic artist, you're a CPA, what do you do differently? Why are you successful? And everyone to some degree has got a unique business. Now my wife and I own, I think I mentioned Sylvan Learning Center in Darien. And we've had that for 25 years. We were the first uh, franchisee on the East Coast. Okay, uh, organizations. Uh, what do people, what organizations do they belong to? And what do they recommend? And how good are they? How helpful are they? You know, have that discussion. But, but ask people, what organizations do they belong to? What's been helpful for you in your business? Particularly people who are also in the financial world or the technology world or the same broad world you're in uh, there. Because a lot of times people are involved. I mean, being a kind of an executive career coach, I, I tend to network broadly. I mean, I network in public relations, marketing, strategy, HR, you know, investment, uh, angel groups, uh, a range of things. Because I like to keep very broad based future trends. I'm very interested in kind of what's coming next, what are the new trends, what are new activities going on, so, so I can go back and share share that with clients, but, you know, think about what organizations, you know, you might want to get involved with. Anyone run across, anyone been to a new organization they hadn't heard of or been involved with? This is a new organization here, and it already got a good following, so, yeah. In terms of organizations, there are morning groups, you know, midday, and there are evening groups, and you need to think about what's the best time for you, the, e the midday groups are, you know, a little trickier now and seem to be less popular. And the end of the day tend to be more social. So, uh, and I find the social meetings might be fun, but you, you don't usually do as much networking, particularly if it's a large group, uh, you know, a chamber thing or something like that. People tend to catch up with people they know, which may be good networking, but you're not going to meet that many new people usually, unless you know a few. What is an advocate? An advocate is someone who can explain you and, and your business or you and, and what you do as well as you can. Who could go out and represent you. 
And how many people do you have that could do that now? Pick a number. How many, how many people would be under five, maybe? Six. Six, okay. Anyone want to go more than six? Thirteen. Thirteen, okay. Do I have any more? Okay, let's write down, spend a minute, write down a couple advocates that come to mind for you. This should be someone who maybe could be nurtured into an advocate, who is out connecting with people. You know, develop your list of advocates. I suggest you shoot for, you know, 10 to 15. Uh, ideally, if you can get to 25, I think that's good. Now, the idea with an advocate is, I think that you touch them every month. Or you touch them as often as you feel is important. So, let's just, uh, let's go around and just, how are we going to touch them? How would you touch them? I see them weekly. Okay, you see them. Okay. Why are there so many different marketing channels? There's direct mail, there's TV, there's radio, there are newspapers, there's the internet. Yet, you know, all these different ways. The idea basically is to reach this person with three or four media probably about six times in a short period of time. And that's what gets that, in this case, a consumer to say, oh, wow, you know. PR, I read a nice article on this. I got a piece of direct mail. Word of mouth, of course, is another one. I heard about you in the newspaper, and then I, you know, I happened to be walking by the store, or I happened to be walking by. I want to go check this out. Okay, so I think email is fine, uh, but think about other ways to touch people. Maybe it's send them an article that you know will be of interest. Maybe that's, you know, buy them a cup of coffee, or maybe that's inviting them to a meeting. Maybe that's sending them a book that you think would be really interesting. The thing about networking is I think that if you don't do it, you don't build and maintain your network. In today's world, what happens? Things change pretty fast, and they're pretty unpredictable. 